In this and the following videos, we're going to talk about the bootstrap method, both parametric and non-parametric bootstrapping. In this video, I'm going to talk about how these methods work, and then in the next two videos, we're going to see examples of these methods in action. Let's first, however, review what we normally do in normal parametric statistics. I have normal in quotes here because much of normal parametric statistics is based on the normal distribution. We begin with a population, and from that population we draw a random sample. Now what we do as a thought experiment is imagine what would happen if we had drawn multiple samples from the population. We don't actually draw these samples. That's why I have dotted lines here to represent that this is more in our thinking and in our mathematical derivations, not something that we actually do. And then we imagine estimating a statistic from each of these samples. And from all those estimates of the statistics, we can create a sampling distribution. This is all done mathematically. So this is a mathematical sampling distribution and it's all based upon a null hypothesis. We then can take an estimate from our actual sample. This is something we do, so I'm representing this with a solid arrow. And from this estimate, we can compare it to the mathematical sampling distribution to see if it appears very reasonable that this came from this sampling distribution. And if so, then we have reason to retain the null hypothesis. If, on the other hand, the estimate looks like it was unlikely to have come from this particular mathematical sampling distribution, then we reject the null hypothesis. Now let's look at bootstrap parametric statistics. Again, we have a sample, and again we create estimates from that sample. But now we imagine that we have a population that adheres to some mathematical form, such as a normal distribution, or a uniform distribution, and we use the estimates from our sample as the parameters for that distribution. So in essence, we're estimating a population. For example, if we have a mean and standard deviation from our sample and we're imagining that this is a normal distribution, we can use the mean from our sample as the population mean, that is the parameter of this normal distribution, and the standard deviation from our sample as the population parameter for the standard deviation of the normal distribution in our population. In that sense, we are estimating the population. Now that we have estimated the population, we draw multiple samples from that population. This time again, there are solid arrows. We actually are doing this. We're drawing sample after sample after sample after sample. That's different than when we use normal parametric statistics in which we simply mathematically conceive of drawing samples. Here we're really doing it. That is, we're utilizing the Monte Carlo method to draw multiple samples. We then estimate a statistic from each of these samples and we use those estimates to form our empirical sampling distribution, what we may call a bootstrap sampling distribution. Now that we have a bootstrap sampling distribution, we could cut off the ends of the distribution to create a confidence interval. We can cut off either the lower end if we want a lower bounded interval, the upper end if we want an upper bounded interval, or both ends if we want a two-sided interval. Thus, we will arrive at a confidence interval for the parameter of our population based upon starting with estimates from a single sample. The parametric aspect of this is that we are assuming a particular distributional form that is based upon parameters for our estimated population. By contrast, we could do bootstrap non-parametric statistics. Once again, we have a sample and we can make estimates from our sample, but those estimates are simply estimates to describe our sample. We don't use those in order to create the population. Instead, we create multiple samples from our original sample. How do we do that? We do that by sampling from our sample. We sample from our sample one time for sample one. We do it again and get a different sample for sample two and so on many, many times. Again, we're using the Monte Carlo method to create these samples, but we're bypassing the estimated population. 
It's still there in the background, but now we think of it as drawing those samples from this estimated population without actually using the population. We're instead using our sample to create these other samples. Now again, we create an estimate of a statistic for each sample, and with those estimates, we again have a bootstrap sampling distribution. You notice that the difference here between the non-parametric bootstrapping is that we never had to assume any kind of distributional form. Rather, we used our observations in order to create all these different samples. Whereas in the parametric bootstrap method, we assumed a particular mathematical form for our distribution, then used the sample observations in order to estimate the parameters of that distribution and drew our samples. Both of these bootstrap methods involve drawing what we call bootstrap samples. That is, we are using the Monte Carlo method to draw samples over and over again. It's just what differs is whether we're drawing the samples from an estimated population, as with parametric bootstrapping, or whether we're drawing the samples from the sample, as with non-parametric bootstrapping. I invite you to move on with me to the next videos in which I'll illustrate both of these methods with some simple examples.